I'm Ben from Howard's Cams. Today I'd like to go over timing a camshaft. Items you will need for timing your cam are your camshaft, your cam card, and tools you will need will be a piston stop for finding piston position or a travel indicator for finding piston position. Tools you will need for finding camshaft position or lifter position will be a travel indicator and magnetic base and one lifter or a travel indicator with integrated lifter. You will also need a pointer for the degree wheel and a degree wheel like the Howard's 92115 kit that also comes with a worksheet for timing your cam. The Howard's 92115 degree wheel kit includes a 14 inch degree wheel, dual sided, it is anodized and marked every degree. It also has the common one inch center hole and a three hole bolt circle for attaching to a damper. It's dual sided the first side being for intake and exhaust valve events or cabinet events and the second side for intake and exhaust center lines. There is a corresponding worksheet that is also dual sided that works with both sides of the degree wheel. What I'm doing now is installing the piston stop. Simply put it over the top of the piston, center the stop on the piston best as possible, and tighten down. Now rotate the crankshaft in the direction of rotation until the piston makes contact with the stop. You can now zero the degree wheel. Now that the piston has been rotated over to the stop, going the direction of rotation. We've zeroed the degree wheel. We can now reverse the direction until the piston reaches the stop. It looks to be 70 degrees. So what we will do is divide that by two, and that is our angle that we will go to, 35. The degree wheel is now set at 35 degrees on the piston stop. To verify this, we will rotate the crankshaft the other direction until we reach the piston stop and verify that we are at 35 degrees before top dead center once again. There it is, 35 degrees. Now the top dead center has been set on the degree wheel, I have installed the drop indicator on the intake lobe. What I will do is rotate the crankshaft to where the camshaft is at its highest lift point and zero the indicator. I will now reverse direction of rotation down about a hundred thousandths and then return in the direction of rotation to fifty thousandths before highest lift point. Looks to be about 60 and a half degrees. What I'm going to do now is rotate the crankshaft in the direction of rotation to 50 thousandths below highest lift point. This is on the closing side.
looks like 144 and a half. Now that we know the intake center line, I've switched the indicator to the exhaust lobe. We're going to repeat the process. We'll first rotate the crankshaft to where the intake or exhaust lobe rather is at its highest lift point and zero the indicator again. Looks like we're there. I'm going to go opposite direction rotation, about 100 thousandths down, and then return to direction of crankshaft rotation, 50 thousandths before highest lift point. Record the angle. Looks to be about 156 and a half. Now I said it was 156 and a half, and how I came up with that was 90 plus. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 5 and a half. So now what we're going to do is rotate the crankshaft, direction of rotation, and get the lifter past its highest lift point and on the closing side down 50 thousandths from the highest lift point. Record that angle. looks to be 71 and a half. What I'm going to demonstrate now is finding timing events, opening and closing events for the intake lobe. What we're doing is finding the base circle or heel of the cam and zeroing our indicator. We will then rotate the crankshaft in the direction of rotation until the tappet reaches 50 thousandths lift. to be about 17 and a half degrees before top dead center. I will now rotate the crankshaft in the direction of rotation past the highest lift point to 50 thousandths above the base circle of the cam on the closing side and record the angle. It looks to be 42 and a half degrees after bottom dead center or 222 and a half degrees of rotation past top dead center. I'm going to show finding top dead center lift number on the intake cam lobe right now. Reason being, some cylinder head guys and piston manufacturers would like to know that number before they can complete your parts. We have an extra gauge set up on the piston as well as our degree wheel and our gauge on the tappet. So we're going to rotate it over and, and your tightest piston to valve typically occurs between 15 degrees before top dead center and 15 degrees after top dead center. So you see where the relative piston positioning is in the cylinder at those angles. So we're right on 15 degrees before top dead center. The piston's 
about 80,000 in the hole. And we have 56 thousandths to tap it with as it's rotated to top dead center. Our gauge reads three thousandths in the hole still for piston position. Our tappet is a hundred and eight and a half thousandths. Now we rotate to 15 degrees after top dead center. And the pistons 76 thousandths in the hole and we're at 165 thousandths to have it with. These things become useful numbers when you're trying to make sure that you have sufficient pocket depth on your piston. What I've done is flip the degree wheel to the opposite side and what I'm going to show is finding the intake center line with the opposite side of the wheel. What I've done is rotated the crankshaft until the camshaft and follower were on the base circle. I will now rotate in the direction of crankshaft rotation until the cam size lift point and zero the cam indicator. It should be close, if not done, already. There we are, close enough. What we'll do now is reverse direction of rotation, and, uh, overshoot it a bit, and then go direction of rotation, 50 thousandths before highest lift point, And note the number. Looks like 60. We'll now go, now go over the highest lift point and down 50 thousandths. Looks to be about 144 and a half. On the worksheet, you will use your number of 60 and your number of 144.5 what we found add them together and divide by two that would give us a 102.5 intake center line thanks for watching i hope you found this useful if you have any further technical questions or need information on howard's cams products please reach out to us via phone email or on our social media 